Hey everyone, in this satisfactory guide video, I'll be showing you how to build a basic starter factory using modular layouts in order to automate all the basic resources you will need in tiers one and two. I'll be showing you five individual layouts that you can put together in a way you feel best in your own factory. You will want to make sure that you have the part assembly and the Logistics Mark II milestones unlocked before starting your starter factory. This is the total of the items that the factory will be producing. And it will be doing this by bringing in three 120 belts of iron, one 120 belt of copper, and one 120 belt of limestone. For the first modular layout, we are going to cover the three basic iron items. We'll start the first iron section with a platform of nine by five. First, put in four smelters on the second row in the second to fifth column and make sure to set these to do iron ingots. Then put in a splitter on the first row behind every smelter. Add belts and make sure that the belt between the splitter in the fourth and fifth column is a Mark II belt. Then in, in the third row, second column, in front of the first smelter right here, we will add a splitter. Then we will add a constructor in the fourth row in all the columns for a total of five constructors. The first two are going to be connected to the splitter right here. The other three will go straight from the smelter to the constructor. The first two constructors will be producing iron rods and the next three will be producing iron plates. In front of the first constructor, we want to do a splitter. And in front of the second constructor, we want to do a merger, making sure that the output for that merger is facing forward. Then we want to add another merger in the sixth row, first column. Then we will belt the constructors right here and add a belt between the splitter and this merger. And then we will add two belts from this splitter to this merger. The reason we are doing this is because this constructor is creating 15 iron rods per minute and we only need 10 going out of this merger. So by splitting this 15 into three, we can then merge two fives to make a line of 10 over here and we send the extra five into this merger right here. Then we will add a merger in front of this third constructor, making sure the output is forward. And we will also put one in front of this fourth constructor, but making sure the output is to the left side. Then we will belt the last two constructor into this merger and this merger into that merger, and then this constructor into this merger. This will merge all the iron plates into one line. Then we will add a constructor in the seventh row in the first column and then set it to produce screws. Then we will add three storage containers in the ninth row and into the three first columns. Then we will belt the first one to go from the constructor. The second will come from this merger right here. And the third one will come from this merger right here. All that's left now is to connect the power. And then you'll want to connect with a Mark II your iron ore that is coming onto this side. This is what it should look like when it's completed. The second layout we are going to do is the basic copper recipes layout. This layout will need a 9x7 area to complete. Start by putting down a smelter in the second row in columns 1, 3, five and seven. Then again, we will create the manifold behind these smelters by adding a splitter in the back of all these smelters. Then make sure to set these smelters to do copper ingots. Then in the third row, second column, you want to add a merger facing forward. Then connect the two first smelters to this merger. Then we want to add a splitter in front of the last two smelters. Then we will add four constructors in the fourth row, starting in the fourth column and going all the way to the seventh column. Then we will connect these to the splitters like this. 
Then in front of this merger, we want to add a splitter, followed by three more constructors in the fifth row in columns one, two, and three. Then we will connect these constructors to the splitter. We'll we'll set these three constructors to do copper sheets and the other four constructors to do wires. Then in front of these first three constructors, we will add a merger, making sure the merger is facing forward. And then we will connect all three constructors to this merger. Then we will add a merger in front of the constructor in the fifth column and then connect the two constructors over here to that merger. We will do the same thing in front of the constructor in the sixth column. Then we will add another constructor in the sixth row in front of this merger right here. And we will set these to create cables. Then we will set three containers in the eighth row starting in the fourth column. And then we will belt this merger, this constructor, and this merger right here to the storage containers. Finally, just add the power and connect the ore to this splitter right here. And this is what it should look like once completed. Next is the limestone layout. For the limestone, you don't need a lot of space. So just adding an extra three by five area in the factory somewhere will work. This one's easy. So start by putting a constructor in each column of the second row. Then add a splitter in the second column of the first row. Then belt the splitter to all the three constructors. Set these constructors to do concrete. If you have access to underclocking, I would suggest you underclock one of the constructors down to 66% to do 10 per minute instead of 15 per minute. Then you want to add a merger in the third row in front of the second constructor and then add all the constructors into this merger. And finally, you want to add a storage container and belt it from the merger. All you have to do now is add power and your belt from the ore. And this is what it should look like. The next layout we are going to do is the reinforced iron plates. And for this, you'll need a 13 by five section. Start by adding four smelters in the second row, starting in column two. Then add your manifold splitter line in front of all these smelters making sure that this line right here between the third and fourth splitter is an actual Mark II line. Then set all these to be iron ingots. Then add a splitter in front of the first smelter in the third row. Then we will add a constructor in the fourth row in all the columns for a total of five constructors. Connect a splitter to the first two constructors and set these to be creating iron rods. Then belt the next three smelters straight into the three constructors in front and set these three last constructors to create iron plates. Then add a merger in the fifth row in front of the second constructor and connect the first two constructors to this merger. Then add a merger in front of the fourth constructor and connect the next three constructors to this merger. Then add a splitter in front of this merger right here in the sixth row. And in the seventh row, we will add three constructors in the first three columns. Then we will belt the three constructors to the splitter. Set these three constructors to be doing screws. In front of the middle constructor, we will add a splitter. And in front of the other two constructors, we will add mergers, making sure that these mergers are facing forward for their outputs. Then we will connect the constructors to the mergers and splitters. And then we will connect the splitter to both mergers. This will create two lines of 60 screws each. 
We will add the first assembler, making sure we line up the first conveyor hole to that merger down below. We also want to make sure that we put it far enough so that it is just off of the halfway mark of the ninth row. We will place the second one just next to it, making sure that the second conveyor hole of the assembler lines up with that merger on the bottom. Then we will belt the merger into the assembler and this merger into that assembler. Next, we will add a splitter on top of this merger right here, making sure that the splitter entrance is coming from the right. We will also add another splitter on top of the other merger. Then we will belt the two splitters and then add a belt from each splitter into the assembler. Next, we will grab the line coming from this merger of the iron plates and bring it up so that it is two notches away from the splitter right here. And then we will connect it to the splitter and merge the two assemblers together. Finally, add a storage container in front of this merger. Make sure to set the reinforced iron plate recipe to both assemblers. Then we will add the power to all of the machines. Connect the first splitter to your iron ore belt. And this is what it should look like once completed. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to get more guides for Satisfactory. It really helps the channel a lot and I really do appreciate it. Finally, the last layout will be the rotors layout. For this layout, you will want to make sure to have a 13 by 9 area. We will add four smelters in the second row, starting in the second column and skipping a column between smelters. Next, as usual, we will be adding a manifold line in the back of the smelters. Then we want to make sure that these are set to iron ingots. Then we will add a splitter in front of all the smelters. Then we will add a total of eight constructors starting in the first column of the fourth row. Each splitter will then go into two constructors and each constructor here will be doing iron rods. In front of the first constructor, you will want to add a merger facing forward for the output. Then in front of the second and third constructor, you will want to add a merger both facing to the left side. Then in front of the fourth constructor, you'll put a splitter. Then you will belt all the constructors, all the first four constructors to the mergers and splitters. Connect the in-between for all of the mergers and splitters. Next, in front of the next three constructors, you will put in a merger facing to the right side. Then in front of the last constructor, you'll put another merger, but this time facing forward and then connect all of the mergers. Then you'll want to connect the splitter that's in front of the fourth constructor to the merger in front of the fifth constructor twice like this. The reason we are doing this is because we want 50 total rods on the left side and 70 total rods on the right side. Then we will add six splitters in the sixth row, all entrances coming in from the right, except the last one, which the entrance comes in from the bottom. Then we want to belt all of the splitters together, making sure that this section right here is a Mark II belt. Next, we will add seven constructors in the seventh row starting in the second column. Then we will belt between all the splitters and the constructors. Make sure that all these are set to screws. If you have access to underclocking, the last one should be set to only produce 10 screws per minute. So underclock it to 25%. Next, in front of the second constructor, you will want to add a merger facing forward and belt the first two constructors into it. In front of the third constructor, we will add a splitter. And in front of the fourth constructor, we will add another merger facing forward. Then we will belt the third constructor into the splitter and the splitter into the mergers next to it. Then the fourth and fifth constructors will head into this merger. This will create two lines of 100. Next, we will want to create a merger in front of the sixth constructor and then connect the sixth and seventh constructor to that merger. What this will give is two lines of 100 screws and one line of 50 screws. From here, we will add three assemblers. 
The first one, we want to line up the bottom of the assembler to be past the middle way of the ninth row. And so that the first conveyor hole of the assembler lines up with the first merger. Then we will add the second assembler next to it, making sure the second conveyor hole this time is in line with the second merger. And finally, we will add a third assembler, making sure that its second conveyor hole is aligned with the merger on the right. Then we will add the belts from the merger mergers into the assemblers. Then we will add a splitter on top of the three mergers, making sure that the splitter entrance is on the left side for each one. Then we will belt each one of these splitters together and then into the assemblers. Then we will go back to this merger right here in the fifth row, first column and bring down the line so that it aligns with the splitters and then go back two spaces and then send the belt into that splitter. Set all the assemblers to generate rotors. And if you have access to underclocking, the third one should be set to 50%. Add a merger in front of the second assembler, making sure the output is on the right side and we'll do the same thing in front of the third assembler on the right. Then we will belt the first two assemblers into the first merger, the merger into the other merger and the third assembler in the second merger. Finally, we will add a storage container and belt the last merger into it. Then we will add power and then add the line for the 120 iron ore. And this is what it should look like once completed. And although you can put them side by side in one rectangular factory, you don't have to do that. You could do what I did here and build them vertically. Now that you are ready for tier three and you're about to unlock coal, you will want to know how to set up an efficient coal generator setup. And you can watch that right here.